Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we're delighted to be here to showcase the Street Law Project, um, which we're leading on. Um, I'm Siobhan Cullen from Letterkenny Institute of Technology. This is my colleague, uh, Brona Hevron. Um, so this is uh, an exciting uh, new initiative which involves cross-sectoral collaboration. Um, we uh, have collaborators working with us on this in other third-level institutions, uh, namely Larry Donnelly in NUI Galway and David Fenley in uh, Trinity College Dublin. Unfortunately, they can't be here today due to exam board commitments, so apologies for that. We're also fortunate enough to have the Law Society of Ireland acting as consultants, uh, and we also have another external consultant, which is Georgetown University in Washington. Um, uh, I'll tell you more about those uh, later. Um, the uh, title of our project then is It's Street Law and it's a module to enhance the transferable skills of law students. Um, it's a digitally supported module and it involves community legal education which is um, targeted at uh, second level students. So I'll just tell you very briefly a little bit about community legal education. Um, it's essentially law students bringing the law to the community. It's, uh, street law is an internationally recognised methodology, but this is the first time it's being trialled at undergraduate level in Ireland. Uh, it's very much an interactive methodology. It's based on problem-based learning and an emancipatory uh, methodology. Again, I'll speak more about that a little later. Um, in this case, the target audience are second-level students, and um, so far as the third level students are concerned, it's about learning through teaching uh, for them. Um, and it's about enhancing their understanding of the law and their own role within it um, uh, through experiential learning and um, whilst simultaneously providing a service to the community, it's also a pipeline project in the sense that second level students are the target audience. Um, so that's uh, what the project is. Uh, I'll now move on to tell you what we have done uh, in the first six months uh, of the project. Um, not necessarily in chronological order uh, exactly, but one of the important aspects of this was the branding of us. And there are really two reasons why we thought this, branding of it rather, why we thought this was very significant. It is an internationally recognised methodology. It originated in the States. It does exist uh, as a method of teaching law uh, in the UK and in other parts of Europe. And we wanted this to be uniquely Irish, as it's the first time it's being trialled uh, at undergraduate level here. And we wanted to have national impact going forward. So we're showcasing today um, a version of our uh, logo for the Street Law Project. Um, we've tendered this to uh, designers and it's with the designers, so this is our uh, version of it thus far, but it's based on the Irish road sign. We wanted it to do two things really. We wanted it to um, be uniquely Irish, so we've included the Irish version of Street Law and we wanted it to uh, be directed at the target audience, the second level students, and be something that uh, would provoke their interest uh, and the transition year uh, coordinators, uh, who are the people who bring these projects into the schools. Um, and our tagline then is law students in the community. Um, so uh, that's uh, a version of um, what will become uh, the street law logo. The digital infrastructure is something that um, it's difficult to capture, I suppose, as with all of these projects, the amount that we have done uh, in, in a very succinct way. Uh, but we started with acquiring the uh, domain streetlaw.ie, which is now registered um, uh, through um, HEA Net. And uh, we've done a lot of research on the appropriate digital platform uh, to use. Um, and um, as you'll be aware, there are lots of uh, different opinions as to what's uh, the best and um, in some ways it's horses for courses, but I suppose the two things that were important for us were that it's user-friendly, particularly as it's going to be used for the third level students to interact with second level students. Uh, and that it is resource friendly going forward. Um, so ultimately, we've decided to use Blackboard to support the delivery um, in, in terms of the uh, third level students, and then uh, the website streetlaw.ie, streetlaw which is currently under construction, will have embedded within it uh, a, a WordPress blog, 
which is one of the ways that the third level students will interact with the second level counterparts. They'll create uh, collaboratively a blog um, uh, on, uh, based on uh, the law uh, that's being taught uh, and learnt. It's ultimately going to be open access and um, will serve as a repository of street law lesson plans going forward because the, the um, ethos of street law is very much about sharing uh, resources uh, and that's certainly true internationally and has been our experience of working with uh, our international consultants. Um, we've acquired uh, laptops for the students to use going into the schools and um, are in the process of acquiring e-books um, uh, in terms of the street law manuals which are coming from the states. Um, so, as was said with the, the, the previous project, um, this is very much at the development stage and is the work plan for our next six months going forward is to uh, put this platform in place. Um, to talk about the sort of two aspects of the collaboration that we have ongoing, the, the collaboration with our third level counterparts, uh, our partners, and with uh, our consultants, um, has been a very positive engagement. Uh, we're a relatively small group. We have uh, had regular meetings and uh, have a, a steering committee ourselves and our counterparts in those uh, institutions, and that's vital to uh, the, the buy-in uh, to the project going forward. Um, I can't emphasise enough how important the external consultants have been, the Law Society of Ireland, who have piloted street law in Ireland but at professional training level and it's uh, not an accredited uh, module, it's extracurricular. They have been very generous in terms of sharing resources. They've invited us to street law exemplar classes uh, that they've run and they've shared uh, resources and mock trial materials that we intend to use going forward. Um, Georgetown, who um, in Washington, who invented street law 40 years ago, have also been extremely helpful. Um, they've invited us to attend their orientation clinic, and they're coming to us and bringing their faculty and their students in January to run the orientation clinic for our um, accredited uh, module pilot. Uh, so um, this, we hope, is going to be the beginning of uh, an interesting and fruitful collaboration going forward. We've also developed interesting links cross-border with the University of Ulster and with Queen's, who've both um, been involved in street law, um, either at postgraduate or at extracurricular level, and they've been extremely helpful too. And and because of where we're situated uh, geographically, that's uh, another interesting uh, collaboration for us to explore. Um, the second level collaboration uh, is the, uh, the cross-sectoral aspect of this. And the enthusiasm from the schools, I have to say, has been unequivocal. Uh, we have two schools on board to run our pilot, but we could have had many, many more. The interest from the schools, from the transition year coordinators, and from the students themselves has been immense. Um, we're essentially running two iterations of street law this year. So just to explain, explain that briefly, in September we're going to run a small pilot. This is not going to be accredited. We're going to be using a small number of student volunteers who've just come through our civic engagement module uh, and they're going to pilot it on the basis of uh, four classes to be run in each of the two schools that have signed up to the project. Once that pilot is then evaluated we're going to run the accredited module in January uh, which is where Georgetown uh, are going to come and run the orientation clinic. Street law essentially requires a two-day orientation clinic, as they call it, which is a team building and an introduction to the methodology for the, the lecturers, the students, and everybody involved in the project. So for our pilot in September, the Law Society are coming uh, to run that for us, and then for our accredited module in January, Georgetown uh, are going to do that. So we've been involved in a number of meetings, uh, attending the secondary schools, getting a feel uh, for how they run, and working out the logistics with the transition year coordinators in terms of the number of sessions, the size of the groups, who's going to be in the room, uh, and all of those kind of issues, which are you know, very important um, uh, if it's to be done right. So this is to culminate then in a sort of competitive mock trial between the two schools, which will take place at the end of their street law um, sessions. Um, and that will take place on campus uh, in LYIT. Our partner institutions will be running uh, the accredited street law module simultaneously in January 2017 on a similar basis uh, in their own uh, institutions. 
Um, so at this stage, we are preparing to deliver the pilot uh, in September. Um, and uh, as I've already said, uh, the Law Society uh, have kindly offered to come and facilitate the orientation. This will be important for academic staff development and for the third level students to be inducted in the street law methodology. Um, uh, as I've already said, we've uh, met uh, with the transition year coordinators. We're now in the process of recruiting students. The demand for the street law project um, is going to exceed uh, the number of places we have available, so it's going to be a competitive um, application process. The students are very, very keen to get involved in this. And then the logistical issues, such as guard clearance and child protection issues, are underway. Um, uh, in a nutshell, we're going to have a teacher in the room uh, during the sessions and a member of academic staff staff um, in order um, uh, to, to, to cover those issues, but guard clearance is required. Um, uh, and at the moment, our students who will be involved in the pilot are rehearsing uh, the lesson plan development uh, with peer assessment, which has proved to be, I think, a very fruitful exercise for them. Uh, just lastly, uh, before I hand over to Brona, uh, the emancipatory nature of, of street law uh, is something that we're working with the students on. Uh, and what I mean by that specifically is that the target audience choose the areas that they want to learn about, uh, and they very much run the development of how the lesson goes. So for example, if they wanted to learn about the law that governs their education, um, they would identify that as an area they want to learn about, and then through a, a process of discussion, they would identify the issues, the potential problems, and how they think the law should be shaped in order to uh, deal with those issues. So it's not a case of feeding them uh, the answers. It's very much an interactive methodology, which is why uh, the training uh, is required. Um, so at the moment we're very happy that we're in a, in a good place in terms of preparing for the pilot in September. We've researched and planned and um, are looking forward, as are the students, to piloting this. So I'll hand over to Brona who's going to talk to you about national impact and uh, evaluation. And a lot of what I'm going to say initially is going to reiterate what Siobhan has said in the context of it being a national programme. So the first feature of this for us is the collaborative aspect. And Siobhan has alluded to the collaboration between the project partners. Clearly, we really need to enhance the, or to maximise the potential of this project. We need to have that collaboration across the board with all law departments. And we're going to promote the pilot in the sense of publicising it and again publicise the whole street law initiative in January when we run it off then and hopefully that will engage other third level institutions. We have the international engagement where we have Georgetown coming in January and we've also had interest from Eastern European countries as well in coming to that so that because it's clinical legal education is taking off there simultaneously. The interaction between the third and second level educational centres as Siobhan has said the response has been immense. We went to a careers advisory fair to promote it and the response was they, for transition year coordinators they need something in that legal socio-political space and this kind of program meets it so they would love to get hold of it. The professional and educational sectors, we, the law society are on board as consultants and they've been really positive and very engaging and very helpful. It's an interesting space however because the Legal Services Regulation Act was passed at the end of December and until now legal education has been entirely the, pro, the domain of the professional bodies. That provided for the establishment of an authority which is going to review legal education with a view to opening it up. In the UK, for example, the universities provide professional educa education. That's not the case here. So that leaves an opening and it certainly will make third level bodies a lot more interested in legal education. But it specifically in the Act refers to reviewing the provision of clinical legal education. So it's going to make it a very interesting space in the sense that universities and Institute of Technology are going to be far more interested in expanding into that area. And the professional bodies, to be fair to them, are going to become a little bit more cautious about being so positively engaged because it's, it might, you know, cut into their territory. Benefits for third level students. Well, obviously, these are, I suppose, one of our main priorities, if not the main priority. And our first priority for them, our benefit for them is, is that it creates the social aware a lawyer that they realise that they, you know, the, the purpose of education is to serve the community and that it's not just a, you know, the mercenary street lawyer that you might see on TV, that it's a much broader concept. And so that certainly for us, that whole civic engagement, community engagement is a very important part of it. 
Equally, though, they're going to enhance their transferable skills. By running these programmes, they are, it's not based on substantive law. It's very much application of it. And they will, between preparing and leading out a street law lesson, they will have to organise, plan, translate very substantive law into very easy, accessible language. So their own transferable skills will be greatly enhanced and obviously increase their employability. And because they have to do this ultimately on their own, we're hoping that it will develop their own belief in their capacity to do it, and that as they leave the law graduates, they'll be more competent personally as a result. Academic staff development, well, this is a, a, a move in terms of the traditional delivery of law programmes. Yes, we use problem-based learning, but it's very much desk-based. Taking it out into the interactive environment, using a digital infrastructure will be challenging. But the way that's going to be supported is to lead out staff initiatives. And I have to say the Teaching and Learning Forum has provided an awful lot of seminars in the digital space which are being used and will continue to be used to enhance the digital skills. In terms of the interactive nature, we've been focusing on getting staff to attend interactive workshops. For example, we're just back from an experiential learning workshop and we're trying to develop that type of teaching in the law department, which will be a challenge because it's certainly not the traditional. Clinical legal education, apart from the regulatory changes, there's a clinical legal organisation of which we are members, all the participating partners are members, and it has been decided to establish a website for it to promote clinical legal education generally. Now, I'm conscious I'm going to be going on speed here because of the time constraints. The first point up there is just echoing the whole community engagement aspect of it, and if we were sent to what we have, the street law pedagogy virtually endorses all of those things that are set out in the Campus Engage Charter. So which came first, it's hard to know, but they certainly complement each other hugely. All of those are very ideological. We have to make it easy to implement, and the digital infrastructure is essential there. If it's not easy to replicate in other institutions, it will be too challenging for them to do so. And that's probably our lasting legacy, is that we give something out to all the third-level institutions that they can easily engage in this type of interactive learning. Oh, I don't know what's happening there. Okay. Sorry, folks, I'm not sure. Okay, the last thing that we were to look at is the evaluation and sustainability. And um, this was certainly one of the things we had to, had to go back, or we felt we had to go back to the drawing board on arising from the panel's comments um, late last year. In terms of evaluation, we have now three stages to it. This we had anticipated, and this basically, it's going to be an accredited module in, the, in 2017, so it needs to make, meet academic standards. And that obviously, that level of rigour is useful because it means that it has to be up to speed. And at this stage, the mo module has been drafted. It's gone through the early stages of our academic council. No major queries at all in relation to it. It's now going into the final stages with the export report is due this week. We don't expect any difficulties there. It should hopefully pass with no difficulty. In terms of the run out of the programmes, very much it's going to be a, a work in progress forever because that's the nature of street law, that you do it, you reflect, you redo it, and so on cyclically. We always intended to do this, and we want all of the stakeholders involved to participate, so we're going to be going to our collaborating partners for their feedback after the pilot. We're equally going to go to the academic staff and mentors involved. Crucially, we're going back to the third level students who we had asked to participate in, that, in identifying what skills they needed. We're going to do a similar survey then, but they will be assessed using reflections. And between the two of those, we're going to have a huge amount of data generated, both quantitative and qualitative, which will really test the validity of street law as a pedagogic method. And we're going to go to the recipients as well, the teachers and the students out in the schools to see what they um, feel values the programme. That's going to generate a massive amount of information. And this is an extra which we've added in and we realised we had to do. We're not going to be able to read all of that stuff. So we've gone and made, during the last six months, we've put in an application to get a research master student who is going to come and we've been successful in that application. And they're going to basically collate, digest, work with all of that information. And ultimately, their question is going to be street law in Ireland, what works and why. So we're going to do all the groundwork. We'll be able to feed them this information and hopefully they'll be able to... Uh, feedback on it so that and again that will also form a, a, give us a way to publicize and disseminate the information earned all right and um, that's pretty much where we're at uh, thank you very much for listening apologies for the speedy ending and uh, thanks for the opportunity thanks,